nothing. Oh shit, there we go. That was a nice little spark. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another ISDT charger. However, this has more functionality, different features, and we're going to see if we can blow this thing up. Yes, and I really mean that. So lately, we've had an influx of these portable chargers coming into the market from ISDT. Basically, ISDT, when I think of ISDT, I think it's like the spam of <laughs> chargers. They're just spamming everywhere. You're like, oh, maybe they'll like this one. Oh, maybe they'll like this one. They're releasing so many different ones that it's just insane. So this is the Q8. It has a couple new features. It's also pretty powerful, uh, around 20 amps, so it could charge to 20 amps, which is really great. And also up to an 8S, which is also really great. So uh, let's talk a little bit about calibration. I also have some issues with mine, and we're also going to see if we could ruin it. And let me explain what I mean. First of all, I want you to take note of uh, this right here. So you see how easy it is for me to go down. It's pretty responsive. Not that responsive as like the Toolkit RC, but it's pretty responsive. However, mine has a defect. The top frame or the top glass isn't really balanced well. And look at that. If I press the enter, nothing happens. I really have to push on it for it to actually register. And, and that is kind of annoying, to be honest. Now, let's talk about how well it's calibrated. It's actually around point. 0 0.05 volts plus or minus, uh, which means it's off by half a volt, but you can recalibrate it yourself. If you go into calibration here, you can, you know, set these to as you please. Uh, if you know the exact voltage of the battery that's currently plugged in from this side or that side, and you could, redo, you could just save it after you calibrate. And or if you screw the whole thing up, you could just click restore and it'll return your default settings. But now let's get to the main features, the, the things that, you know, makes it different than the other ones. Because I can just sit here and show you just it's basically like anything else other than the new features here. So as you can tell, it's, it's, it's kind of very annoying, to be honest. So I'm just letting you see how this thing actually works. So if we do a short press then we enter the menu to charge and choose the other features. If we do a long press on the enter, then we enter the main menu. So right now I'm going to do a short press just like that. It's very difficult on mine because it's not really lining up. And if you take a closer look at the uh, glass here, you can see it's already banged up and scratched. This has only been out of its box for 14 hours and only used for about an hour and a half. And it was just in the backpack. Now they, do, they usually provide you with screen protectors. This time they didn't. So take that into consideration. This thing will get scratched up really easily. All of these little... Uh, portable chargers have the shittiest glass or plastic or whatever the hell they're using. It's really terrible. So if yours didn't come with a screen protector, what I recommend you do is basically buy like an iPad or some kind of a, you know, anything that's cheap, you know, any screen protector that's large and cheap, then you could just kind of cut it out and get it to fit there. And uh, you should be good in that perspective. I highly recommend you actually do that. So uh, let's go to the new features that I was talking about. So it has something called DC power and also has something called destroy. Destroy will allow you to discharge at 1.5 amps to 2 amps to completely drop the battery to zero. So this is a new feature. Uh, the other ones that I have never had this feature. So this is a new one they've added. And uh, the discharge rate is only a maximum of 2 amps. And the DC power is where it gets interesting. So currently I'm going to remove this battery here. because This is the one I was testing while I was charging. And we're going to do DC power right now. And this could get pretty crazy. So DC power is basically acts like a power supply. However, every single one of these that I've gotten always said, please do not short out the terminals, which means just do that. And here we're about to do that and see what the hell happens. Because I remember the toolkit RC had a dedicated fuse. And this one uh, just, I don't know. We're going to figure that out right now together. So we're going to go to DC output. We're going to do a small voltage first. So, uh, you know, just to, just to be a little bit safe. So, yeah. Okay. So this thing could output 30 volts maximum. So it'll step up the voltage also, which is really great. And uh, we can see 10 amps. I'm actually going to lower this slightly. That's too many watts here for me to uh, short circuit currently. We're just going to start small. We're going to do 12 volts and we're going to do just two amps right now. We should possibly see a small spark. Okay, and there we go. So right now, like this, it's outputting 11.7 volts, and it's limited to 2 amps. So let's see what happens here. So now, we see we get 1.2 volts. So something happened. And I think it's a fuse inside. A hard fuse again. Oh no, we got power again. And that dropped. So it might have a self-resetting fuse. Now let's grab a multimeter and actually test this because this is actually really useful. So we're going to go DC power again and we're going to start it. So right now it's saying it's outputting 11 volts and we're going to go ahead and test that. 
So here's my multimeter. We're gonna put this here. All right, and I'll bring this closer for you guys. So it is outputting 11.7 volts. I think it does have a self-resetting fuse, which is really great, unlike the Toolkit RC. Well, that's really well thought through because I noticed nowhere on the packaging it said do not short terminals. All right, so at the moment of truth, we're gonna do 30 volts, which is really dangerous, and we'll do 10 amps. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. All right, we should see a nice spark possibly. Nothing. Oh shit, there we go. That was a nice little spark. It's still responsive, that's really great. Let's see if it still have anything here. So we had a really nice fat spark going on for it. Let's grab an all-in-one flight controller, see if we could power this thing up here. So I do this so you don't have to. 30 volts might be a bit too much here. All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens here. Okay, so we should see this thing boot up. If everything is done correctly. Yeah, there it's booting up. So that's really nice. Um, I don't know if this will save your quad. I don't think it's actually cutting off when it's shorting out, um, which is kind of interesting, I guess. So here, here's another test. All right, so let's go ahead and see what it's outputting here. So this has been shorted out and it's saying 1.2 volts. And I think it'll make a great thumbnail. And it is outputting those 1.2 volts basically right there. So that's pretty accurate. So what it does is it drops the voltage, but it'll give you the amperage uh, when you short it out. So it'll immediately, let's see what happens when we do it like this. All right, so I'm going to short them out together. We're just having fun here. So the voltage is dropping quite significantly. We're seeing, we're just going down to 100 millivolts here. So 100 millivolts with around 8 amps, so around 4 watts. Oh, that's not bad. So it's going on, what is it stuck on? Right now it's constant current, so it's limiting it at 5 amps. So we can see constant voltage. That means right now it's in constant voltage. And once we bypass it, it tells us that it went into uh, constant current. So... I'm going to drop this down. So right now we're going to do half an amp. I'm just, I just want to see what's going to happen. So we're getting the 22.2 volts, as you can tell, shorting them out now. It's, it's bypassing its, its constant current. So it's working by watts, I guess. So as you can tell, 1.2 volts, we smack it together. We get 8 amps here. See, it's going up to 8 amps, 9 amps. So it's going on constant current, but I set the current to be half an amp. But I'm guessing it's doing it by constant watt output, possibly. It's really nice that it drops the voltage, though. Um, it's actually pretty interesting. Look at that. Oh, shit. That scared the shit out of me. So, yeah, you, you, can, you can do some damage. You can do some damage with this shit. So, right now, what I can tell you is this thing could, could uh, last quite a while. However, what I can tell you is don't rely on it to cut off the current or the voltage if you're using it, for example, to test your quadcopter if it has a short circuit. Um, it'll more than likely fry not a lot, but it'll probably fry a thing or two in there. Uh, so keep that in mind. I really wish it would just completely cut off. It would feel a little bit safer. It's getting a little, it got a little bit warm here, but that's fine. So overall, this is my uh, review, I guess, or overview of the ISDT Q8 smart charger right here. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the quality doesn't seem so great for some reason. Maybe I have a bad batch. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But let's see. Actually, I probably could show you what I was talking about earlier. Do you see that right there? Look at that. When I go like this, that's what I was talking about. The glass is not leveled. And that's why the middle part, I have to push a little bit harder. And that, that can't, you can actually, you can see that more in real life, by the way. So you see that? That's me pushing every time I push. So it's right there. When I push, you see it going through. I'm not pushing that hard. Like this, not that hard. This is how hard I would usually press to change up and down. And this is how much I have to press in order for me to press the inner button. It could get pretty annoying, actually. But I'm not saying yours might come like that, but just be careful. And I'll have everything linked down below, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, um, yeah, that's all I got to say about this one. Um, since, you know, that, that's really it. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.